Coming up on Scoop News Reviews, today we're going to compare Windows 10 to Linux Mint 17.2 Cinnamon Edition. For all you Windows lovers and Linux haters and non-techie people that think Linux is too techie for me, we're going to prove you wrong and we're going to prove how powerful and fast and productive Linux can actually be. So stay tuned. I have my desktop open here with a beautiful background. In the background, I'm also running Windows 7 through Oracle Box. So if you want to run your Windows environment within Linux, you can do this. And this is if you have some kind of proprietary application that you really need access to and you don't want to reboot over into Windows. Here you go, you're running, you have all your network capability and I share a data drive that I use between Linux, Windows, and VirtualBox so I can keep all my data in one location and have access to it outside of each operating system. However, you don't have to install VirtualBox to run Windows programs because Linux comes pre-installed with Wine, which is the source code to run Windows in the background. And here we are, I have Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, Fireworks, and I know your Windows people are saying, oh yeah, yeah, right, just run Photoshop. Let me see this thing work. So, okay, let me start it up now. It's using Wine to start up, so it could take just a few seconds more. As you can see, four or five seconds, a lot faster than Windows. Here we are, we'll create a brand new document. There's your brand new document. And we'll draw something for you. I'm drawing some things. And we'll exit. So you can now run Windows programs inside of Linux. To do this, I use a program called Play on Linux. This has applications that have been tested and tried. And it has a software manager so that you can install different types of applications, including games. Age of Empires, Call of Duty, graphic design programs, internet programs, Safari, Internet Explorer, I don't know why you want that, but if you're a Microsoft techie, here's iTunes under the media, under the office you can also install Microsoft Office programs. However, Linux Mint comes with its own software manager and to protect any software from being uninstalled or installed that you don't want to, it always asks you for the password. Many applications are available, and I forgot to mention that all the applications in Linux are free. You don't pay anything for them. Also, down here you see this little update icon. It's saying I have one update available. It not only updates your operating system, it updates all of your software that's installed. Here are some featured applications, VLC Player, Firefox, Opera, Thunderbird, Skype, Microsoft people say Skype does not run, Audacity, 72,984 free packages are currently available. Don't think you can find that many in the Microsoft Store that are free and powerful, just as powerful as the Microsoft applications. Fonts, Science and Education, Programming, Games, Office, I want to look at the Office programs. I use WPS Office. One, two, three seconds. We're up, and here's all of the templates. You can also use any Microsoft template that you download from Microsoft.com. Has the same familiar ribbon that you see in the Microsoft Office Suite, and all the same features and power that you would have in Microsoft Office. Or you Microsoft haters that says there are no spreadsheets. Here's a spreadsheet program, WPS Office Spreadsheet. You can do formulas, everything you can do in Microsoft Office virtually. And also, if you are doing PowerPoint presentations, WPS presentation just as powerful and more than the Microsoft Office Suite. And all of it is free. 
under accessories, common accessories that you would find in Windows, calculators, PDF viewers, there are more than one of these applications available. So if you're not liking the look and feel or the functionality, there are some more powerful PDF viewers. This is just a basic document viewer. But there are also PDF viewers you can download through the software manager that you can edit PDFs, do all these crazy and wonderful things for free. Sound and video, I have these installed. Banshee is one of my favorites. And also, I use iTunes from time to time when I want to watch a movie or the music that I downloaded from iTunes. It just opened up in my other window. I apologize. Here we are accessing the iTunes store. It does use iTunes version 10 because 12 is not approved and working yet, but I'm assuming very quickly it will be. Looking at the file manager, I have a theme that looks familiar to the Windows themes. And so you can see here we are running very fast Windows applications, productivity applications, and it's very simple and easy to use. Customization is simple through the system settings in the control panel here. Setting up a printer, I use a color laser printer from Samsung. I just clicked on the printer here and installed it. There's my sound options, power options, all these familiar things that you would have in Windows. So if you want to try out Linux, I would recommend going to linuxmint.com. You want to click on the Linux Mint 17.2 Raffaella Cinnamon released based on your type of system, 32-bit or 64-bit, which you can see under the Windows system information or right mouse click on your computer inside of Windows will tell you whether you're 64-bit or 32-bit, then download the according ISO that you would need. I use the torrent because it downloads in about three minutes or four minutes. And also you can take this ISO, create a bootable USB using pen drive Linux. So you have to have about a four gigabyte USB stick. Plug that into your system. After the ISO is downloaded, run this program. It'll ask you where the ISO. It'll ask you what type of Linux you're installing. You choose Linux Mint. It'll create a bootable USB stick. Now when you reboot Windows, you hold your escape key down or one of the F keys to select a different boot device. Select your USB and boot right into Linux. I will say that when you're running off of the USB, it is much slower than actually having it installed because it's running off of a USB drive. But you can play around with it if you like it. You can install it alongside of Windows. So when you reboot, then you have an option to boot into Linux or the Windows. So why don't you test it and see for yourself. And for all you Windows lovers and Linux haters, we hope you try it out. And I use it about 95% of the time. I can get all of my applications. The only time I need to go back to Windows is if I'm doing some kind of music, production that's outside of Audacity, where I need to plug in lots of microphones and devices. But I could also set up my Linux system, and I'm working on that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.